Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Thea and now it's finally time to set up our bullet journals for the first month of 2022. As usual, this video isn't very short, so grab tea or some snacks and plan January with me. Before that, I'm quickly going to flip through my December setup and I really like this neutral Christmas theme and I'm very happy that you seem to like it too. Thank you so much for all the support and lovely comments in that video. I was actually able to monetize my YouTube channel and I never thought that would happen so quickly as I only started making videos in September. Speaking about videos, I'm going to work on that hand lettering video next, so that will be up sometime in January. Remember to subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to get notifications once it's up on my channel. Anyway, I really wanted to draw animals for my January theme, as I hadn't done an animal theme in such a long time. The animal that I chose to draw is an owl, and I like how dreamy this cover page turn out. I started off by outlining the sketch with Pigma Micron 01 fineliner, and in the owl's belly I drew some random little lines so it would have more texture. Then I started drawing the background of this cover page. I drew some flowers and leaves very loosely and these are super easy to draw. If you struggle with drawing animals, I think this cover would look great with just the moon and flowers as well, and that would be a bit more minimalistic. To make this illustration nicely balanced, I drew the same flower and leaf doodles on the right side of the owl. Then I drew the moon, and this was honestly the most intimidating part for me, as drawing circles freehand is very hard. <laughs> when I sketched this out, I used a coaster, but I couldn't use it when outlining, as it has some texture, which could have made the circle a little pumpy. I wrote the header with Tombow Fudenosuke pen, but didn't use a lot of pressure so the text would be a bit thinner. Then I erased all the pencil marks to make the coloring process a bit easier. First I colored in the shadows and I made them on the right side of the owl. I'm using a Tombow dual cross pen in the shade 992 for this, and after I was happy with the shadows, I started coloring in the owl with a lighter brown shade, which is a Tombow 990. I went over some areas multiple times to add more shadow and depth. Then I started adding details to the wings and tail by making them a bit darker. Once the owl's body was colored in, I added some color to the face as well with light grey Tombow and colored in the nose with Tombow in the shade 977. For the flowers, I chose this pink shade Crayola Super Tip as I thought it would go well with the neutral shades of the owl. I colored in the moon with a Tombow 942 pen and tried not to go over the lines twice so it wouldn't look very streaky. I also added some shadows on the bottom and right side of the moon. For the leaves I chose this dark grey color instead of green so they wouldn't look too summery. To add some depth to this illustration, I added shadows with lighter grey color to the right side of the flowers and owl. Oh, and also on the bottom of the moon. After that I started adding some highlights to the left side with my white gel pens. By the way, I have listed all the supplies that I used in the description box as always, so you can find all the Tombow shades there for example. I added this white pattern to the wings and tail for the details and then I started adding white highlights to the flowers as well. For that I used a smaller jelly roll because the leaves are quite small and delicate. I also added highlights to the flowers on the right side and after that I moved on 
to the shiny part of this bread. I used my trusty old gold jelly roll and drew little sparkles with it to the empty spaces of this illustration. Then I moved on to the quote page and the quote that I chose was It's wise to try and be who you are. I really tried to find an inspirational quote but as someone who loves puns I had to choose this one once I saw it on Pinterest. And I think it has a nice message as well. For the lettering I used Tombow for the Nosuke pen, Sakura Big Micron, I believe it was in size 01, and for the Who part I used Tombow Dual Brush Pen in the shade 992. After I had lettered the quote I drew the same flowers as I did on my cover page for decorations. I think these flowers made this theme a bit summery, but I don't mind it as I was really running out of wintery theme ideas. The Finnish winter is very long and dark, so I felt like having something bright and whimsical would help me to go through that. I would love to hear how's the weather where you live and if you have all four seasons there. Currently it's very wintry here in Finland and it's about minus 10 degrees Celsius, which isn't very cold as we sometimes get colder than minus 20 degrees. Anyway, I added some white highlights to the flowers and some gold sparkles to finish off the quote page. The cover page looked like it was missing something, so I added washi tape to finish it off. The Gruit washi tape is from the washi tape shop and you can get 10% off with the code TMBUJO10. I have listed that and all other discount codes in the description box, so check that out if you are looking for some new stationery. It also helps to support me as I will receive a small commission from the brand if you buy something through those links. This is totally optional, so I would encourage you to buy only something that you will actually need and use. Now that the cover and quote pages are ready, we are moving on to the next spread which is my monthly calendar. I started off by drawing a little moon and flowers for the decorations. I actually placed this doodle a little bit too close to the calendar, which you will see later, but I just let it be. I'm very perfectionist and it still bothers me a little bit, but I try to let some mistakes be, just so I would be more okay with them. When I started bullet journaling I made one rule with myself and that is not to rip off the pages when I'm not happy with them. That has taught me some creative ways to fix mistakes and also that I'm usually the only one who notices the mistakes anyway. And I feel like you will forget about it over time as you focus more on using the actual spread. Wow, that was a long ramble. I would love to hear how you deal with mistakes and what are your thoughts about this topic. Anyway, as you saw I used a ruler when making the calendar and that's because I used a black pen. I usually freehand the lines only when I'm using lighter colors because then the little bumps aren't as noticeable. I also turn the notebook around like I did here, so it's easier to draw the straight lines. After the layout was ready, I started coloring in the little doodles on the top of the calendar. Sorry about the blurriness, my camera decided to focus on my hands and the pen instead of the paper. I'm still learning how to use this camera and I think I zoomed a little bit too close. Anyway, I'm using the same colors as I did on my cover page to keep everything nice and cohesive. Do you have any special plans for January? I don't have any plans yet, but I'm very excited about the new year. I'm recording this voiceover a day before Christmas, so I haven't filled out my yearly review and goal spreads yet. I set them up in my last video, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. 2022 is going to be the first full year that I'm not studying anymore, and that has challenged me with my bullet journaling too, as I don't need it in the same way as I used to. I don't have as many things on my to-do list anymore, so I focus more on journaling it when filling out my weekly spreads, for example. Anyway, I decided to add some washi tape to the left side of the calendar. I did this because I'm going to cut a Dutch door on the base on the right and I thought it would be nice if the spread would have these brown washi tape borders on each side. 
I have seen many bullet journal creators doing dot stores and tabs lately, so I wanted to try them out too. One of these creators is Tina's Diary, and I would highly recommend checking out her YouTube channel and Instagram if you haven't already. She makes very detailed and beautiful paintings in a bullet journal, and I will link her YouTube and Instagram account in my description box. After I had cut out the Dutch door, I started making my trusty old one-liner day spread. I used Tombow Fudenowski hot tip pen for the header and drew a little flower doodle on the left side. I also added this grid washi tape to the right side of the page, as I thought it would look cute with the brown washi tape I'm going to add later under the Dutch doors. Then I moved on to the coloring part and the process is basically the same as in the previous doodles. This spread is actually one of my favorite spreads to do in my bullet journal as I love reading afterwards what was happening in my life. I also write about my days in my weeklies but I like having this spread as well because I usually write the highlights of my day here. This has also helped me to notice and appreciate the small good things that happen every day. After the spread was almost done, I cut out the excess washi tape and also drew the same kind of lines to this spread as I did on my monthly to-do list. I think the lines give a bit more color and structure to the spread and I also turned the notebook around again because it's easier to draw these lines when your palm can rest on the top of the notebook. To finish off everything, I colored in the tab with the same Tombow Dual Pros Pen 942 that I used for the lines and dots on the calendar. Next I'm setting up my monthly trackers. First I cut out the Dutch door for this spread as well. Then I colored in the tab on the other side. I like to use a piece of paper underneath to avoid coloring the other spread. This is a great way to reuse the paper that you cut out when creating Dutch doors. I really liked my tracker layout in December, so I decided to recreate it for January as well. My mood tracker is going to be a little different in this layout though. As you will soon see, I'm recreating my mood tracker from October. I will have a box for each day and I mark my mood in it with different icons. People often ask me how I keep up with trackers or using my bullet journal and the key for me is having a daily bullet journal routine. Of course there are days when I don't use it as much, but I usually just catch up and later fill in everything I can remember. I think the most important thing is to figure out why you are bullet journaling and what works for you. For me, trackers are really helpful and they motivate me to use my bullet journal because I have to fill them in every day. On top of my habit tracker, I have three easy habits that I try to do every day. If I'm having a bad day, for example, I can still feel that I accomplished something if I have done these three things. I also track things that I don't do as often and I feel like that takes away the feeling of failure if you don't manage to cross off each habit every day. Mood trackers are something that I struggled with in the past, but ever since I started making them in a way that I don't have to color them in, they have been working a lot better for me. Anyway, I kept this layout pretty simple this time and didn't add any doodles for decorations. Instead, I used the grid washi tape again to decorate the right side of the page. I think the spread looks really nice and I like the simplicity. Sometimes it's nice that setting up a spread doesn't take forever, and usually setting up a tracker spread takes quite long. This took about 20 minutes to make if I remember right, so it's not bad at all, at least for me. Anyway, then I added some color to the spread by coloring in the tab and also the top part of my habit tracker. I would say this theme was surprisingly quick overall and the cover page was the most time consuming one. Now we are setting up a weekly thoughts and monthly review page. 
I didn't make this last month and missed it a little bit, so I brought it back for San Jewelry. I started off by adding the washi tape on the right side of the page so you can see it when flipping the dot stores. Then I wrote out the header for my weekly thoughts page. The idea of this spread is that I will write my feelings and thoughts in it after each week. This has really helped me to realize which kinds of things cause me stress or what makes me happy. While writing I also think if there's something I could do differently next week. This spread also helps to write the monthly review as you can see at glance how each week has been. Anyway, I kept this page pretty minimalistic and added just a simple leaf doodle next to the header. Then I wrote out each week of January in the boxes. For some reason I colored in the tab with lighter color than the previous ones and I kinda wish I had colored in the other side with a lighter color as well because it made the spread look a bit more interesting. For the monthly review page I'm using the same layout as always because it's still working really well for me. I will first write out the successes of the month and these can be very small things too. In December I would have written for example that I managed to film two extra videos before Christmas and also tried out making stickers again. You will actually see the sticker in the next spread. I will also write about the challenges that I faced and my monthly favorites so I can remember my favorite TV shows afterwards for example. To improve section I will write things I could do differently next month and this could be something like managing my schedule better. Anyway I drew this little owl on the bottom right corner of this page for decorations and I think it turned out cute. I used the same coloring techniques as I did on the previous doodles. Basically I first color in everything and then add shadows and lastly highlights with white gel pen. I don't show the sketching part in these videos because it saves a lot of time if I do them off camera. If you would like to see more detailed drawing tutorial on something, please let me know as I can definitely do that. I think the sketching part is really important and helps with getting the proportions right. I usually first use a reference picture of a real animal and when I'm familiar with the shape I try to draw it from my memory. I think the cartoon-like style helps with drawing the owl because it doesn't have to look very realistic. Finally I added some gold sparkles and some lines to the bottom of the spread to add some color. Then this monthly reflection spread was ready and now we are moving on to the last spread of this video which is the first weekly spread of January. I started off by writing the week number on the top left corner and then I also did a mini calendar which helps me to see the monthly overview and stay on schedule. As I said earlier, I tried making stickers and this whole theme was actually inspired by this old sticker that I drew in Procreate. I was happy how it turned out, so I wanted to use the sticker in my setup and it was also nice that it saved me some time. I think I still have to fix the colors a little bit if I end up printing more as they don't look as vibrant as they did on my iPad. Anyway, for this weekly layout I drew small boxes for each day of the week and also a big box for notes. I colored in the top part of the box with a Tombow Dual Brass Pen in the shade 942. This has been my go-to Tombow shade lately and I like how it's slightly more warm toned than the 990 for example. For the weekdays I chose this monoline cursive font as I thought it would go nicely with the weekly header on the top left. I used Pigma P and Fineliner for this if I remember right. On the 
extra box I wrote out a little quote that goes like this. A year from now you will be glad you started today. I struggle with procrastination and starting out a new project or task can be the hardest part for me. When I start it, I can usually finish it without struggling. So this quote is a reminder for me to think about my future self and stop avoiding things I actually want to do. One thing that can help with procrastination is to set a timer to 15 minutes and do the task you've been avoiding until the time is up. When I do this, I usually want to continue doing the task as I get in the workflow. I would love to hear if this is something you struggle with and if you have found any ways to help overcome the procrastination. Hopefully we could help each other out. And now back to the weekly spread. I decided to add this slide grid to reminder and notes sections and then I fixed some mistakes with white minibal signal pen and added white highlights to the leaf doodles with smaller jelly roll white gel pen. Now it's time for the final flip through of my January bullet journal setup. I really like how this theme turned out even though it's a bit different compared to the themes I have done lately. I especially like these Dutch doors and how they look with the washi tape. This was really quick and easy way to add some details to this setup and I will probably do something like this in the future as well. I would love to hear what you think of this setup or which was your favorite spread. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a moon emoji in the comments if you are still here. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best for the new year. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!